Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I'd like to declare my interest as an employee in a global MNC. In 2018, the Select Committee of Online Falsehood, which comprises of members from both sides of this House, concluded that this phenomenon of foreign interference is real and a serious problem in Singapore, and that the committee received evidence that state-sponsored information operations have been carried out against Singapore, and the committee provided 22 recommendations, which included implementing specific countermeasures to combat state-sponsored disinformation operations. Hence, I'm glad that three years later, after the recommendations of the select committee, discussions in parliament, conferences, publication, and speeches during the Committee of Supply, we are ready to debate this piece of legislation to protect our national interests. The threat of foreign interference is a global problem. And the threat to Singapore is real, is growing, and we need to enact strong safeguards to protect our national so sovereignty and security, social cohesion, and democratic institutions. In protecting ourselves from foreign interference, there are several factors that make it even more important for this bill to be enacted. Firstly, Singapore has a small and digitally connected population, with IMDA citing 87% of our 4 million resident population having access to the internet. Unfortunately, a recent IPS survey also found that our digital literacy rates are worrying low, with 6 in 10 respondents believing false information to be true and found that no one is immune to false information, regardless of age, socioeconomic status and educational background. The IPS study also found that more than two-thirds of over 2,000 respondents trusted a manipulated news article presented to them as part of the study. Secondly, the existence of fault lines in our society is undeniable. Sensitive issues of race, religion, foreign workforce versus local hires can be easily manipulated to sow social discord. We cannot allow others the chance to destabilize this delicate balance that we have continuously been working on. Lastly, our open economy it keeps us relevant and competitive globally. International investors from various industries are attracted to set up operations in Singapore. Facebook, Google, Twitter, Tencent, Alibaba, Huawei, WeChat. These are all foreign companies that have established substantial operations in Singapore. We value the partnerships we have forged with each one of our trading partners. And we seek to continue to be able to balance their needs while propelling our national interests forward. However, the increased Sino-US tensions will invariably affect Singapore. We will have to be able to assert our neutrality and independence to maintain the balance that we have. We must prevent foreign interference from destabilizing what we have. We must keep in mind to pursue what is best for Singapore. As Minister Vivian Apley said in the CNA interview, there is a big difference between being useful and being made use of. We are not isolated from the impact of foreign interferences, as Minister Shamugan had mentioned earlier. With the rise of technology and even more ubiquitous use of social media, these interferences are expected to be more frequent and more sophisticated, and they will attempt to sway public opinions and even destabilize the precious balance that we have so carefully cultivated. I understand that there are some reservations to this bill. However, let me just point out that such legislations to ensure non-interference by foreign agents are currently already in place in countries such as Australia, EU, US and Canada. They have laws to prevent, detect and disrupt foreign interferences conducted through hostile information campaigns and the use of local proxies in their domestic politics. For example, in June 2018, Australia passed laws targeting foreign interference in politics and other domestic affairs. And the European Commission is proposing a new Digital Services Act, which will, among other things, regulate online platforms by transposing what is already illegal offline to the online space. These examples serve to illustrate the fact that it is only expected that states will have to protect their self-interest and prevent foreign intervention, especially when its intent is to harness protest potential. Notwithstanding the above, I wanted to share a concern which was addressed by the minister in his speech earlier. One concern was from foreign businesses and Singaporeans working in MNCs on whether discussions between a Singaporean 
and a non-Singaporean individual on policies which may affect their business may be seen as foreign interference and captured within the scope of the bill, especially if it's done on an online platform. This has been a particular concern, especially in light of the current labour crunch causing delays and pushing up the cost of doing business. This labour crunch is brought about by border restrictions, the lack of access to foreign labour and the perceived increasingly anti-foreigner sentiments exacerbated by the current COVID environment. Rightfully, foreign businesses and MNCs are concerned that such discussions on the impact of our policies on their businesses may run them foul of the law. I'm glad to hear that Minister has reiterated that discussions of this nature does not meet the threshold to be foul of the law. Mr. Speaker, in Malay, please. Jawatan kuasa pilihan mengenai kepalsuan dalam talian ditubuhkan tiga tahun yang lalu dan dianggotai oleh anggota parlimen dari kedua-dua bahagian Dewan. Setelah mengkaji bukti daripada 169 perwakilan bertulis dan bukti lisan daripada 65 individu dan organisasi, ia telah mencapai kesimpulan bahawa penyebaran kepalsuan dalam talian adalah masalah nyata dan serius di Singapura. Jawatan kuasa pilihan juga diberikan bukti bahawa operasi maklumat yang ditaja oleh negara asing telah dilakukan terhadap Singapura. Sejak 2018, ancaman campur tangan asing telah dibincangkan berkali-kali di Dewan ini dan di media dan penerbitan dalam talian. Sudah tiba masanya, undang-undang kita menangani ancaman campur tangan asing yang semakin mengancam keselamatan negara kita. Terdapat faktor lain yang menjadikan penting bagi undang-undang ini dilaksanakan. Menurut kajian tinjauan Institut Kajian Dasar, juga dikenali sebagai IPS, kajian itu mendapati bahawa kadar literasi digital kami rendah dengan 2 per 3 responden mempercayai artikel yang dibunapelasikan. Bayangkan, 2 per 3 responden dengan tidak saja mempercayai artikel yang dimanipulasikan oleh kajian itu. Dan bayangkan, jika artikel itu dimanipulasikan oleh mereka yang ingin memecah belahkan masyarakat kita, kita mesti dan harus mengatasi kepalsuan dalam talian ini apalagi bila ia melalui campur tangan negara asing. Penyebaran palsu dalam talian melalui campur tangan negara asing adalah masalahnya nyata dan semakin meningkat di seluruh dunia. Salah satu cara yang dilakukan ialah dengan menggunakan akaun media sosial palsu untuk mempengaruhi dan memecah belahkan keharmonian masyarakat menggunai isu sensitif seperti isu perkauman dan isu agama. Dalam satu kes di Amerika Syarikat, sebuah organisasi dari negara asing telah menggunakan akaun palsu yang mempromosikan tujuan Islam dan juga akaun palsu yang menyebarkan mesej anti-Islam untuk mengatur tunjuk perasaan mengenai penubuhan perpustakaan Islam pada waktu dan tempat yang sama. Ini menyebabkan ramai rakyat anggota Amerika Syarikat menghadiri tunjuk perasaan itu dengan seorang penunjuk perasaan dilaporkan membawa senapang. Di Singapura, kita tidak terpencil dari kesan campur tangan negara asing. Contohnya, pada tahun 2018 hingga 2019, di tengah-tengah pertikaian dengan negara jiran mengenai ruang udara dan isu maritim, komen dalam talian di media sosial didapati dibuat oleh akaun-akaun tanpa nama yang bertujuan untuk mewujudkan penentangan palsu terhadap kedudukan Singapura. Sambil kita berusaha meningkatkan undang-undang undang-undang untuk menangani masalah ini, kita juga harus menyedari kita harus menyedari bahawa kita dapat memainkan peranan sebagai warga negara Singapura. Kita mesti lebih berhati-hati dan skeptikal terhadap apa yang kita baca di media sosial termasuk komen-komen dan kita jangan mudah dipengaruhi tanpa asas kebenaran. Terutama lagi pada isu-isu yang sensitif yang lebih mudah dimanipulasikan untuk menghangatkan perselisihan faham antara kaum. Kita harus memeriksa sumber informasi supaya kita dapat mendapat maklumat yang sahih. Jika ragu-ragu, kita sepatutnya jangan berkongsi mesej-mesej itu kerana takut menyebarkan maklumat yang salah. Oleh itu, undang-undang ini adalah langkah penting 
yang harus diambil untuk melindungi kepentingan negara kita dan juga melindungi diri kita daripada digunakan mereka yang tidak berniat baik. In summary, Mr. Speaker, sir, since 2018, the Select Committee on Deliberate Online Falsehood provided 22 recommendations, which included implementing specific countermeasures to combat state-sponsored disinformation operations. We have sensitive issues like race and religion, which can be easily manipulated by foreign actors to fracture our social cohesion. Our status as an open economy attracting investments globally implies that we must balance the needs of all stakeholders while putting forward our national interests. We need to enact strong safeguards to protect our national sovereignty and security, protect our social cohesion, and protect our democratic institutions. As we chart the path of Singapore forward, we need to have open conversations. Open conversations with all Singaporeans, but protected from foreign interferences which may not be in the best interest of Singapore. As such, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is an important step to take. I support the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir.